Hey guys, it's Bear with Espresso Outlet. Today I have all four Kaleido sizes set up out in the shop. And I get a question all the time about which Kaleido roaster is good for me. So I just wanted to go through, I've used these three, I've not used the M10 yet. Uh, I wanted to go through maybe who all these roasters are for. So we're just gonna start off with the M1. This is a 200 gram roaster. You can see it's a little bit different style than the other three. And what's really nice about this is it is so small. Uh, I can tuck it over on my bench over there, for example, underneath it, and it's just gonna disappear. It's really not that big. It's the size of like a really big toaster maybe. Uh, I have some visual representations in front. So that's about the max bean capacity. This is 200 grams. And I feel like this is a really good introductory roaster. So you can get all of these. Well, the M10 we don't sell in the standard model we have the pro and the dual the rest of these we sell in standard pro and dual so i'll go over that real quick the standard is going to be the Kaleido tablet only so it's supplied with this little tablet specifically from Kaleido. it has a graphical user interface where you can either do a manual roast or you can actually save the profile and it will trend that roast and do an automatic roast uh, you still do have to babysit it, so don't think it's just going to do roasting for you, but it is a very nice feature. So the standard is the tablet only. The next one is the dual system. And the dual system, this one in the middle is actually a dual, the M2. And it has the tablet, so you can roast using the tablet, or you can also connect to a laptop via the Artisan software. So... Uh, it's really nice if you want to use the Artisan Designer to develop your own profiles and maybe you even did a manual roast and you saved the background and you went into the Artisan Designer, you laid that background in there and then you recreate it with a few tweaks. Now you have a nice um, roast that you can follow or even auto roast using the Artisan software. So. The dual system, you can use the tablet by itself or you can use the Artisan, so that's really cool. And then the next one would be the Pro. This one right here is a Pro. This does not have the tablet. Um, it is Artisan only. So it, it connects to your laptop with a Bluetooth function and it runs only Artisan. Now you can get these three sizes right here in any of those configurations. So if you wanted to start out on the M1 with just the, the screen, that's what this is. It's a really nice way to learn roasting. So that might be something for you. So this is kind of like your hobbyist roaster. It's 200 grams. So if you're looking to get a pound or two, you're gonna have quite a few roasts to get that much beans. But if you're just looking for something to learn the hobby, maybe use it as a really small sample roaster, this is really perfect. It's really nice, it's fast. Um, there's some beans that I tried on the Gene Cafe in the past, and they just never tasted good at all. And when I got the M1 and started doing an actual roast profile, it turned out amazing. I was just, it was night and day difference, and it's a fairly similar capacity, it's smaller than the the Gene Cafe, but really impressed with the M1. I'd personally prefer to use the M1 over the Gene any day of the week. The next one in our lineup is the M2. It's 400 grams, so it's double the capacity of the M1. I have a little bag of beans in front of me right here. And this is a very nice, I would say serious home roaster. So if you're getting into home roasting, you're wanting to produce beans for your family, maybe a few friends, um, two batches in this gives you about a pound of roasted beans. It really depends on your beans. You might get a little more, a little less, but the capacity is 400 grams. It's small enough that it's really easy to store. It's light enough that if you need to pull it out and set it up, like I typically set up a table and I'll pull it off of my bench and I'll, I'll go roast. This one is really not that hard to move around. It's not light, but it's really easy to move around. Um, I talked about the capacity, so doing about two batches in this is gonna sell, set me personally for about a week with a pound of beans. So I feel like this is a really nice size. I feel like a lot of people overlook some of the small roasters. They either want the M10 or nothing. And the M2 is really hard for me to say which one I like the most, but it's somewhere between the M2 and the M6. 
So the M2 is awesome. Next one over here, we have the M6. So this is our 700 gram. You can see it pretty much fills up this whole bag with beans. And it's almost twice as much as the M2. So if you notice a trend, it's 200, 400. This is 700, so not quite double. But the M6 is a small little beast. It really packs a big punch. I used this the other night. I did five roasts. I could have actually put more in, but I was... I had certain bean origins that I didn't have quite enough beans of. So I did five roasts and I got about four and a half pounds in an hour. So really not that long to make four and a half pounds. That, that was set up, preheat, roasting, cool down, clean up. It was a, a little over an hour for four and a half pounds, five batches. So really nice size. Um, if you did two batches in this, you're gonna get a solid pound and a half of roasted coffee. So if you're looking to do fewer roasts, the M6 might be a little bit more ideal. If you plan to do some for maybe some family or friends, like on a fairly regular basis, weekly, monthly, you could probably get by at the M2, but you're probably gonna be doing a couple more roasts. So if you're wanting to save some time, the M6 is really gonna save you quite a bit of time. I mean, it's roasting almost double what the M2 does. The M6, I would say, is the perfect size for a home roaster that wants quite a bit more beans. So if you did two roasts on it, you're going to get a pound and a half. So four roasts, um, you're three pounds, give or take. And that's quite a bit of beans for a week. So that might be a pound for yourself and a pound for two family members or some friends or something. So really cranks out quite a few beans and quite efficiently. Last but not least is our biggest model. It's a kilo roaster. So it is 1200 grams. And we have two bags in front of us. And it's essentially double what the M6 is. And this is kind of getting to the point of your small commercial. So the popular one that's been on the market for quite a few years is the Alio Bullet. And it is also a kilo roaster. A lot of people might say you need to run it a little bit less than a kilo, and I agree, it might perform a little bit better, slightly less. I have noticed on all of these, when I run it too little, it seems a lot harder to get a nice roast, where when I run it near capacity, I get a much nicer roast. So, like this is 400 grams capacity. If I put 300 grams in it, 350, 350 is really nice in this one. Same thing with this. I can do six to 650 grams out of the 700. So I'm not just really filling it up, but it seems to roast a lot better when it is at near capacity versus too little. So I'm assuming similar with the M10, you're probably gonna be a little less than a kilo, but I mean, that's a lot of beans. And I was doing a little bit of math earlier, and if you did 10 roasts out of this, I mean, you're getting almost 20 pounds of beans. And that's after the weight loss. So that's, that's quite a few beans. So uh, people ask all the time, what about running these every day? Uh, the Kaleido factory tells us that they've done lots of testing where they've ran these for, I think, as, as long as 40 hours straight on an M10 just to do some testing and it just kept going. Uh, there are some small shops, they run a similar M10 uh, fairly regularly, like multiple times a day to roast beans for their small coffee shop. So they're, they're built really high quality. They're built to last. They're built to be maintained. So don't think that you're going to get these and it's going to require zero maintenance. All these types of tools require maintenance and cleaning. Uh, if you do need to replace the heating elements, it seems like if you do have one fail, it's a very infantile failure. So it's going to be when it's brand new, they fail. And it seems like if they do fail, you replace it and you're, you're good for quite a few years. Um, they are cheap and really fast to replace. So if that, that's an issue, that's probably your biggest consumable is your heating element in these. Um, what else? <clears throat> you do need to do some cleaning. We have a cleaning video. I would say that they're fairly easy to clean. On all of these, there is on these there's actually the heat shield so you remove these heat shields and then there's the face and the drum pulls completely out i could do i did a cleaning on the m2 in about 10 minutes so 
It comes with the supplied tools, the supplied Allen keys. You can pull the entire drum out. These are our all stainless steel construction. So you can use some cleaning solution and you can actually put that drum into a water bath with some coffee cleaning solution and scrub it, get those oils off. I typically just use a brush on the inside to clean them out and make sure it's really dry before you put it all back together and put it all back together. It doesn't take that long, 10, 15 minutes. And you might need to, if you're a hobbyist, you might need to do it a few times a year. It's really quite easy. So on the size, the M1 is a little bit different than the other three. Um, on all of them, you have a chaff collector and on the M1, it pulls out the front. Very easy to use. On the M2, M6, and M10, it is actually in the side. Very similar design and it just pulls out like so. You dump it in the trash. It, you'll want to make sure to do that after each roast. Depending on the beans, some beans have quite a bit of chaff. Some beans don't make that much, but you don't want that chaff getting so hot that it's introducing additional smoke into the roast chamber. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is the cooling tray. And I find it looks very simple, but they've put a lot of thought into these cooling trays. So if you look at it, it just looks like a bin. It doesn't look really that sophisticated by any means. But if you notice in the bottom, there's actually a gap at the bottom and what it's doing is it's pulling air from all sides of the beans. So this is actually tapered on the inside and it's going to pull air off the back and it's also gonna pull air from the underside which is gonna go underneath it and up the back. So it's pulling air from all four sides of this bin. Very efficient. I found that these cooling fans are very powerful. You'll, if you get one, you'll notice how loud they are and how much air they turn over but they are very efficient. I typically just use a small spoon to stir it because you'll still have some beans in the middle that you'll want to churn. So on like a full size uh, commercial roaster, it has the spinning bar to distribute the, the coffee beans. You'll want to do that just by agitating with a small wooden spoon. Very easy to do. It takes, you can get the beans mostly cool within a minute. I usually run it for two, two and a half minutes minimum, but I think it's pretty cool. So it, it works very efficiently for as simple of a, a design as it is. If we want to take a quick look at some of the features on these machines, it has a very nice and intuitive bean dump. It has a magnetic catch. So you'll fill up your hopper up top with your green beans. And once you reach the charge temperature, you'll simply just drop the lever and the beans will feed into the roast chamber. As soon as they're all in, you may have to brush a few down with your fingers, flip it back up and it locks into place very nicely. Going back to running too few beans inside the roaster, if you're running it at minimum or even below minimum, your trier may not pick up any beans. So sometimes you might need to sit here and just have it pointed up and the beans will actually start churning into it and then you can pull them out. If you're running it at capacity, you're not gonna have any issues. Now, when you run it, you wanna make sure that it's pointed down because what's gonna happen if it's up is you're gonna get some lighter beans in here and they're not gonna to continue to roast. They're just gonna be hot. So after you try it, take a look, put it back in and rotate it back down. Very nice. I really like the triers on this. That's one thing on my Gene Cafe. I really just could never see the beans very good. The next feature would be the bean dump. Again, they use magnets. It locks into place very nicely. And then when you lift it up, they dump out. So really nice. They dump out very fast. There's actually an auger on the inside. So it actually pushes all the beans out the front. And that auger also acts as a really nice dechaffer. So on other roasters, I've noticed they get just tons of chaff in their finished coffee. In this roaster, like I, I roast these Ethiopian beans that have just loads of chaff. And sometimes I still have to do a little bit of additional shaking and like a colander to get the chaff off. The average bean that I roast in this is pretty much chaff free. It looks pretty much professionally roasted coffee. Pretty amazing. I really like that. Chaff really doesn't affect your cup that much, but it is a little bit annoying. It is messy. I don't like it getting stuck inside my hopper. So 
the fact that this does a very good job at chaff collection is very nice. Another kind of unique feature, I don't think it's a must have feature, but if you're trying to cool down your roaster, I usually turn on the exhaust fan on the inside. So it's going to pull hot air out of the roaster. A lot of times what I like to do is just drop these so that it can actually pull air through the entire roaster. But if you want to cool it down a little bit faster, it has these wings on the side that you can prop up. And it's gonna allow the, the heat to dissipate from the roaster even faster. Now you gotta be careful, it does have these heat shields on the side and they will be quite hot, but you can remove them and that'll draw even more air in. What I like about these removable heat shields is you can actually have your drum move and you can inspect for any stuck beans or any deformities without even pulling the drum out of the roaster. So you're able to do some light maintenance, maybe brush off the sides without taking the drum out and keeping it quite clean without taking it apart very often. You will wanna do a deeper cleaning at some point, but this is a really nice feature that I think people think it looks cool, but it actually does serve a purpose. And both sides do open. I just don't have enough room to open the other side. To reassemble, simply just drop this back into place. I'm gonna start at the bottom. And pull out on the knob and it'll lock back down. So very easy to use, very easy to clean. And it really didn't take that long to cool down, especially when you have that fan circulating air throughout the entire roaster. So if you're trying to set up and you need to put it away, it makes set up really quick and it makes cool down really quick. Usually by the time I bag my beans, it's nice and cool and I can put it away, dump my chaff and go on about my day. So a quick recap on who these are for. I feel like this is very good for a starting out roaster that wants a fairly serious roaster, doesn't have a lot of room, uh, then maybe they want to learn the artisan software. Maybe they just want to learn how the coffee beans are roasted on a profile because a lot of the less expensive roasters out there are kind of, you set a temperature and you just hope that it's roasting well. This gives quite a bit of feedback and it's a very nice introductory roaster. The M2 I think is pretty much the perfect home roaster for most people. Um, I mentioned that you can do about two batches and get a pound. So if you're just doing it for yourself, it's really not gonna take that long to maybe 30, 35 minutes to do two roasts between setup and cleanup and the roast itself. So really nice size, doesn't take up a lot of room. Um, I think it's a really cool roaster. It's probably, I would say if I was gonna choose one, I'd probably choose an M2. Uh, if I wasn't really more into the business, I definitely would probably go with the M6 because it is a little bit bigger and I do make beans for some other people. So that brings me to the M6. If you're making probably more than a pound and a half, two pounds a week, the M6 is really going to speed up your workflow of roasting. So it is a very nice, serious size roaster. It's going to be for the home roaster that is really producing quite a few beans a week. And then last is the M10. This is pretty much getting to the commercial size. It's definitely on the small end of commercial. Uh, most commercial roasters start at about three kilos, except for the Bullet, which is also a kilo, so it's an identical size to this. And you could do a small shop with this, I think. Uh, I, I don't know personally anyone that is doing it, but I do know some people have some plans to do it. And from our distributor, they say that a lot of coffee shops are using the kilo size roaster and having really good results. Now, you will have to continue to roast throughout your day, but if you're getting about two pounds a batch, that's gonna, that's gonna give you quite a few beans in a day pretty easily. So this is definitely more on the pro side of the roaster. You're gonna get a lot of beans. So if you're just a home roaster, the M10, it weighs a lot, takes up quite a bit more room, it costs more. So if you're just wanting to roast two pounds of beans, I mean, you could do that in the M6 really easily in two roasts. So. All these are almost double the capacity of the previous, so just look at how much you consume a week. Uh, if you're looking to maybe have some gifts a few times a year, you could probably still get by with this M2. Christmas time comes around, you wanna roast five pounds of beans for some friends. You're gonna be busy that day, but I think you're gonna get by. 
Uh, M6 is really nice. Uh, I have another friend that's using the M6 and he has just a very small coffee roastery. He really likes the M6. So going back to just the different configurations, we have the Kaleido tablet only. It's a very simple interface. They're, you don't get all the advanced features that you're gonna get out of Artisan, but if you're not the computer savvy person, but you still wanna get into roasting, running the tablet is really not that bad. It's a pretty easy learning curve, and I think it's really easy to use. Now, I think the one thing that I have heard a few people complain about, people that have some vision problems, they have some problems seeing the screen sometimes, so just know that this is the tablet. It is not just like an everyday tablet. It is specifically made for the Kaleido. So you can't use a different tablet. If you went with the dual version, you're obviously gonna get the tablet, but you can also use Artisan as well. So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Now, the thing that I kind of don't prefer about it is to use the Artisan software, you still need to have your tablet plugged in. It's really not the end of the world, but it just feels like one extra thing in the way if you're not wanting to use the tablet. Where when you use the Pro, there is no tablet at all. And this is more for the people that aren't afraid of the computer. You need to be able to figure out how to connect to Bluetooth. There are a couple of COM port communication items. We have it all on our website. It's very easy to do, but the first few times you do it, you're probably gonna struggle through it. Or maybe if you don't see the video, it's not quite as intuitive as some of the more modern like your AirPods or something that you just open up and they connect to your phone. You're actually gonna have to go and you're gonna have to set up a few parameters on this. So don't think it's just quite plug and play. So if computer stuff scares you, um, I think you can do it, I really do. But just know that you're gonna have a little bit bigger of a learning curve. So that's the three connection styles. I really don't think you can go wrong with any of these. Um, the M1 I've had for quite some time and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm between these two as my personal favorites, the M2 and the M6. I just think they're the perfect size. The upside of the M6 is you could do 400 grams in this and you could do multiple origins in the same week. So if I wanted to do a couple of fairly inexpensive origins for like milk drinks, then I wanted to do a nice fruity natural origin. Um, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to run two or three different roasts, smaller roasts through this M6. Um, when you get into the M10, it's gonna be harder to do those smaller batches. I mean, you're probably wanting to run at least a pound. So if you have some pretty expensive natural beans that you're wanting to run through, you're probably gonna have to put at least a pound into this to get a nice even roast. Um, it, it seems to just really over roast if you go too little. I know people have done it, I just think it's a lot harder to do. I'm not saying that you can't do it, it's just a lot harder to do. So that's just my take. It really is a personal decision here. You need to look at how much you consume a week and really how you wanna use this roaster. Is roasting even for you? Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. You can save a lot of money. I have a lot of people say, why would I go buy this? It's two, $3,000, that's a lot of money. I can go buy a lot of coffee for that. And Really what I tell them is you can go buy some very premium coffee and roast it yourself. And I might be paying $22 for 10 ounces of the same coffee, or I'm paying eight or $9 a pound for the same thing in green. So it's not free, but it is substantially cheaper. You can roast it however you want. Maybe where you live, there aren't very good coffee roasters around you. You might have some coffee roasters, but if you're looking for a very espresso centered bean, I, at least years ago, was struggling to find good espresso beans in my town. So now I'm able to roast however I like with whatever beans I like. I'm not stuck with what they provide. So I feel like there's a lot of pros. It is also a hobby. Um, you're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna enjoy it if you're really into it. I feel like these, I actually enjoy using the Gene Cafe. I never really cared for that much. Uh, I did use it for exactly one year and I didn't buy any coffee beans. And it was good coffee, but the coffee beans tasted more baked. I could tell certain beans, if it wasn't a bean that I could roast a little bit dark, it wasn't getting the thermal temperature all the way through the bean. So the middle of the bean would be a little bit green. You get those grassy flavors. With these roasters, it's really easy to get a very nice high quality roasted bean, 
even at a lighter roast. The lighter roast is going to take you a little bit more getting used to, but it's possible. So having something like this, while it is more expensive, the bang for your buck and what you're going to get out of it is not even compared to some of the other, I would say less than a thousand dollar roasters out there. They're just not even close to the same. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, go to our website, www.kaleidoroasters.com. Um, you can also visit espressooutlet.net. That's also our website. And we have lots of information. If you want to see more about this, we have YouTube. Um, we also have a blog where we try to, as people ask questions, like what on the M2, what does this green switch do? Well, we get that question all the time. So we make a blog post about that. So lots of really great blog posts on our Kaleido website. So if you think one of these is for you, you can reach out. We can talk you through the different configurations and we can talk you through the different sizes. I guess the last thing that I didn't mention is right now they are available in black. This is a rust color. It looks kind of brown or red. It is actually chemically rusted and then they stop the rust process and seal it. I think it's really cool. Some people, they, they either love it or hate it. I think it's, it's my favorite. The one that I don't have up here at the moment is white. And the white kind of, people say it's the Stormtrooper one. It kind of looks Star Wars. So I think the white's really cool. I'd like to get my hands on a white one here soon. And I think coming soon, they have started offering a solid stainless steel version. So it's the rust and the stainless steel is going to come at a premium cost. But if you're investing that much, what's another about $100 to get really what you like. So those are the three main colors that we offer. And we're going to offer a fourth color in the future. Let me know if you got any questions. Hit subscribe. That really helps us out. Thanks for watching.